chemotherapy benefits overestimated. Are MDs really setting realistic expectations for their strategies for advanced cancer patients? A high percentage of advanced colon and lung cancer patients believe that chemotherapy can cure their cancer, so is this true? No, it really isn't, and that's what these people who did a, who made a, a, a presentation in the New England Journal of Medicine and published a, a paper there, they thought that there was maybe 2% or 3% of people who have far advanced cancer are actually going to be cured by it over a five-year period. So we're looking at very low numbers, and most oncologists want to be thoughtful and and caring about their patients and hopefully meet them where they are and try to inspire them to think that there's hope and so what they tend to do is say well if this doesn't work we can try that and if that doesn't work we'll try this and they're in there trying to do all the things that, that they can that largely don't have a lot of science behind them to show that it's likely to do much good. I thought it was kind of sad that the patients that seem to have the best communication with their doctor that really like their doctors the most mm -hmm. seem to be the most misinformed. Well that's really true. I mean if you've got a, a doctor who's who's kind of blowing hot air at you and wants to make you think that there's a lot that can be done I can understand the reason for wanting to do that but if you look at the value of it it's really quite negative because it it gives people the false impression that they're going to be getting something more than they are. So what's really going on during this doctor visit? Well, I think that there's some placebo effect that's very important that could be good because that changes the outcome of, of what's going to happen. Placebo is very powerful medicine. Maybe 30% of the effect that we see of everything that happens in medicine is related to placebo. But the difference between placebo and chemotherapy is enormous. I mean, if you're trying to give a chemotherapy drug and call it a placebo, why not use something that's not going to hurt you and it doesn't cost up maybe a hundred thousand dollars to give it to you for a year and maybe just give you a couple of months of increased survival. Yeah, because if somebody is really that sick and they don't have much of a lifespan left and then you give them this drug that makes them so sick and right. tired and throwing up well, and you losing can understand their hair, the compassion. it's making their quality of life worse. So sure. Well, the doctors have a lot of so, compassion. So, but how does a doctor set realistic expectations you know, and still give the patients hope and, and, and trust. Well, they can't uh, when they're in this field very well because they tend to look at technologies and, and drugs to try and solve the problem. And the problem is, is that for far advanced cancer, there have been multiple studies showing that about 2.2 or 3 percent of people are going to be alive in five years. So, so what are we really doing? It's, it's like giving people false hope. If we're going to do that, why don't we at least get the psychiatrist to do that or to get somebody who uh, that they trust and are working with to do that so that they can get the real honest picture of what's going on. And the other thing is you have to worry about their doctors and the conflicts of interest that they have, and they're not uh, immune to it. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of vulnerability associated with your income being about one-third coming from the sale of chemotherapy drugs, and that may shock a lot of people to hear that, but that's the truth, and there have been studies published in the mainstream journals that show that. So when they have a conflict there, and their job or their income depends in large part on selling more chemotherapy, there's a piece of you that says, well, let's, or of them, that says, maybe we should, you know, consider doing this, because maybe you'll be in that 2 or 3%, or maybe we'll get lucky, because I can do it a little better. What do you think would be a good strategy for, you know, for a doctor to help the patient to make a good decision about their care? Well, it's first being honest and, and not being like a, you know, somebody who's a, uh, who has a crystal ball that's going to give you the final answers. And not give you a time limit, probably. Yeah, no, I don't think that's right either. But I think we need to be more inclusive in therapies. We need to be more integrative. We, don't, we shouldn't be sticking with things just because that's all we have and then running it into the ground, which is often what happens in this setting. So I'm for doing integrative practice. Let's bring in new therapies that are not toxic, that might have some value, that aren't expensive, that are safe, and don't have a lot in the way of side effects. So there are things like IV vitamin C, uh, methyl jasmonate, artemisinin, uh, even mistletoe. There are all kinds of things that are available that should be considered. But the problem is, is our oncologists are not trained to know this. And they've got a big block at doing it. And the standard of practice in the community is not to go there.
That's why it's so great what you do at the Health Medicine Center, where you practice integrative medicine. Yeah, I want where to... all the different disciplines work together. Sure. And everybody's an individual, and what works for somebody might not work for somebody else. Sure. So, if you can know your patient like you sure. always do, you know them so well, and you listen and care and yeah. and get their histories. See and what they want to everything. do. Everything. Yeah. We'll be more and honest with them, and and you can tell them we got new things. I mean, I would prefer not to use a drug that is going to cost you $100,000 a year that's going to have side effects and know that only 2.3% of, of you are going to be alive at the end of five years uh, and use it for the placebo effect. And sometimes only just a few weeks or months. Oh yeah, that's right. And so I'd be more inclined to try these other things. So I'm not opposed to using chemotherapy, surgery, and radiation. Not opposed at all. It's just overdone. And we need to be looking at other kinds of strategies. I think it's a responsibility of every healthcare practitioner who's a healer to look at every option that's possible and then look at their patient and then come up with a, with a therapy that makes the most sense. And that's where we fail. So we, if we're going to do medicine that's going to serve our patients, that's good medicine, not any particular style of medicine, well, but good medicine. Well, the oncologist should look out of the box, outside the box. We should all look out of the box and then we should get together pool our resources and see what we come up with.